topic questioning this morning. We're glad that you're here. We wanted to be in this room today because you, we've got all the different types of questioning posted on our walls. And we're going to talk a little bit about the learning walk that took place a little earlier this week and what all these bright colored post-its mean. Right. Um, as you know, um, Central Office had a team of about six to eight people. Mm -hmm. Um, they came through and their main goal was to look at questioning. So they wanted to see where we were in all of our buildings and did this with all the schools. Um, so ours was Tuesday and they came through and basically, as you know, they came in your room and you probably saw them just jot stuff down. And that's what they were doing. They were just jotting down questions. And so then they came in and started looking at where they fit on Bloom's taxonomy. So. Um, we asked you to come in a little bit earlier and kind of look over. Some of you may recognize some of your questions, um, but I really want to want you to look um, at kind of where we were looking at. And the one thing they did point out that I thought was um, really um, an excellent uh, point that they made is how many that you can see a certain color go across all the way up through the higher level meaning the lesson went from basic knowledge and then all the way up. And so that thread was seen and they were very appreciative of that. So um, overall they were extremely, and I think mm -hmm. Heather said it was on Facebook um, that, I don't know what's the The Germantown Municipal School System, um, really pleased with what we're doing with visible thinking, that we're leading the pack with what we're doing at Dogwood. So I was really excited to to read that. And of course we know it. It's just nice to have the affirmation. The affirmation. Come in. Yeah. But what trends do you notice as you look at the chart paper? What trends do you notice in the questioning? And each evaluator kind of had their own color posted. And so if you see trends of yellow, pink, blue, and green, that's what the observers saw. So do you notice any trends as you look at what's posted around the room? Obviously it's heavier over here. Okay, <laughs> it's heavier. It's okay, it's heavier and wider. What do you think that that might mean if it's heavier on one side of the spectrum than the other? We're more comfortable asking these lower okay. questions. Okay, so we may be more comfortable asking the knowledge comprehension questions as opposed to the upper end of the spectrum. Um, something else to also consider is that when you get to the higher end of Bloom's taxonomy, it kind of becomes a different animal because it takes on a whole different form than at the very beginning when you're dealing with knowledge and comprehension and so forth. And there's a place for all of these questions. It's just where are we living? And that's sort of why we're here this morning. Um, I asked you to come up with some questions. Do any of you want to share some of the questions that you came up with or your students came up with? Yeah, that was one thing they really pointed out yeah. too was they were so surprised at some of the student mm -hmm. questioning, which I was extremely glad to hear because it showed that we've we've taken that leap of risk taking. Um, they were quite quite complimentary of that. Anybody remember any specifically? I know, Alexa, you shared some questions this week, and I appreciated you. When we start in the mornings with our brain busters, a lot of my students, I know Lori does this as well, ask when we're going through our grammar, why do we need a comma there? Or why is that capital necessary there? Um, they really, while the woman was in there, one of our questions had, um, like a person's name in the middle of the sentence. And we were talking about why you would put commas around the person's name. And they kept asking, well, why do you need that? And then some students would be like, well, you usually pause when you say that. So they're asking questions about that. And then as we were reading our novel, uh, we came up with some questions that just, um, they were basic, more comprehension questions. Sorry. Um, like why the, character was going to get in trouble or if the character was going to get in trouble. They were asking questions more as a prediction type of thing. They were trying to think of, okay, in the next chapter, do I think they're going to get in trouble type thing? How many of you 
start your lessons with both questions. Okay. I know I've gotten into the habit. When you come up with burning questions, what do you find is happening in your lessons when you've got a, a kind of a through line question that's running through? What are you finding? They make connections. Okay. They're they able to make connections. connections and it's like a bridge and it carries them on to higher level thinking. It just kind of flows that way. Questions are what letter is this? You have what to ask that to begin with. They so that so how do you build on that? And can you throw that out? No, no. 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 you can't throw that out. You have to have what you have to do. 
do is, like I said, take one of those and bump it up a notch. It doesn't mean you throw all this out with the bathwater. There comes a time where you have to have basic knowledge. You're going to have to learn basic multiplication. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what but, it is. But what could you what could you do with what does the letter the sound the letter A makes? What would be bumping it up a notch? Once the kid got to that and could tell you that, what could you do next? And then Jen said, I think she. What else? Another word. Yeah. Right. What's, what's another, another word that starts with that sound? Exactly. Or, yeah. Another exactly. word. Is there anything else that we can think that. of? Mm -hmm. Okay. Over there. With the different sounds of the A, you could say, okay, if A puts on its long A hat, what would it change that word to be? Oh, or, that's a good. Um, <laughs> a can make the schwa sound. So, what would happen if it put on that hat? So. And I know we're talking about sounds at the kindergarten level, but think to the upper grades what we can do. What I'm looking at it in terms of how I understand it is if we can get these babies going from the basic, which is what they need, and then moving up, can they create something completely new out of the information that we're giving? If they can do that, then we're on the upper end of the spectrum. So once we know and once we've assessed they've got it, what new things can they do with it? Because we've discussed that before, that's understanding. Not just regurgitation, but the ability to create something new out of it. Don't you think part of that too, yeah. at, at our level, is peer tutoring. Oh, and yes. so oh, if yes. I have that long A or the short A sound and I come over and I'm working with my peer and then I can relate it. Mm -hmm. I mean that's that's part of it. Yes, being able great. to explain it to others, break it down to others. And I think that's where the collaboration mm -hmm. at some point where from where kindergarten and first can and we need a lot more of that too. And I know planning is it's difficult. But that's where you can also because they have to bump that up <laughs> to a different level, hopefully, with most mm -hmm. of their kids, mm -hmm. right? So that would be a great collaborative move. Definitely. First grade, tell me the question that you worked with. Is what she needs more or less than what she has? Okay. We put explain what does she already have okay. and what would it take to get what she needs and does she really need more and is more really less? Oh, we got a loom or we got I like that. Perfect. Mm -hmm. 
great idea. I love that. Have them it's identify. Fun. Yeah, have them have ownership of where where is their question. That's great. Any others? What about where's, where's second grade? It was a while with the cipher. I think we got the right question. That's got to be dance. Or Christine, you know. How many things sly and sneaky mean the same thing? Okay, but you put sly with the uppercase S. So we were going at it, so that was the character in a book. And we're like, oh, gotcha. But it's not. We think it's just the words. Okay, so how would you change it? Well, we decided that um, you would talk about and compare what does sly mean, what does sneaky mean, have you used this in sentences before, have we met characters in this story that are sly and sneaky, how were they, what did they do, have we had characters in other books or stories that we've read that were sly or sneaky, and then maybe they could apply it to writing a paragraph or a story about a character that was sly and sneaky. So in that, when you listen to her, where would you take her? And this is something we got to work on. Listen to what they're saying. Listening to what she said, where would you put her level of questioning that she changed that into? Well, they're creating something. Mm -hmm. So they are so, creating. Is that a fair thing? You're assessing to see if they if understand. They can it. use the word correctly if they know what it means based on the app whatever the character's doing or saying or what's making them sly and sneaky. Why do you say these are the same? Be careful when you look be careful when you look at assessing that it's not just total recall assessing. Mm, right. Okay. It's gotta be an assessment to a higher level of actually taking it and breaking it and decomposing it and changing it somewhat. So personally I heard more application in that of where have you seen this before? What other character did you have? And then changing it to writing a paragraph about that and comparing it. To me, that's more application. Anyone get anything else? So it still brought it up. Doesn't mean you have to bring it all the way up no, here. We, yeah. we just want to bring it up a notch. We also said they could, we, we said, do you know anyone that is lying <laughs> 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 like your real life, you know? And so that way they could make connections with people they really knew. And then antonyms, right? Mm -hmm. know well, antonyms, that was a good one, where you could just take the words yeah. and put it in some kind of thinking map. And where they're writing antonyms and other synonyms and maybe writing sentences and making illustrations. <clears throat> okay. There is there a third grade? Okay. Would you let go ahead because there's more. How many words are in our word bank? Okay. So, you know, basically the answer is 10 or whatever. Right. It's very close. Yeah. So that was a pretty easy one to extend. Um, instead of saying how many words are in our word bank, presenting the word bank and saying maybe, uh, do you see any words that are unfamiliar? Do you see any words that are familiar? Do you see any words that um, have a connection to a synonym? Kind of taking the word bank and making it grow. And then, how many of these words could be used in your everyday life? When's the last time you used the word blah, 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 what it was? Kind of connecting it to um, relating to the vocabulary. And then, what else do we add? Okay, just taking that, where did okay. you take it to? What level did you take it to with that? I want you guys to start evaluating when what you're saying and what level you've taken it to. That's the only way you're going to start... And we have to do that whenever we're looking at evaluation. Yes. We look at your questions. Uh, application. Again. Application. Okay. Yeah. That's like sorry. analysis. You've jumped, up, you jumped up from knowledge to application. Mm -hmm. and, and there are some things that are more limited, like a word bank. Right. And I think you go to evaluation as well once they apply the, the right. knowledge of the new vocabulary right. and then they use it in their own writing. Would that go over to evaluation? And one thing in a word, sorry, in a word bank is also... Why do we always give a sentence and only one word can be used in that? Then by process of elimination sometimes. Mm -hmm. So have you ever had a sentence where the word could be used again? Mm -hmm. yes. Even that brings it up to a different notch. Can, can, can some of these words be used interchangeably in different sentences? It doesn't always have to be you have five words and you have mm -hmm. five sentences. And multiple meanings as well. You know, Correct. Can you use this word exactly. Can you use it in two different contexts? Great. That's synthesizing. And 
I know that we're running out of time for our PLC this morning, but for the next week, this is what I want us to do. There's a visible thinking routine called question starts. And you come up with as many starts to, you give a child a topic, and you and your students come up with as many possible questions as you can related to that topic. <clears throat> and so I challenge you this week to do question starts in your room. And I also challenge you to use the thinking maps. Now I know the bubble maps, or I know the primary bubble map is used for adjectives, but I always like to tweak things. Why not use a bubble map where you've got the topic in the center surrounded by questions? And you and your students challenge yourselves to move beyond knowledge and comprehension, but to see how deep you can go. And you've already done that with your app. <laughs> it was really amazing what they but, came up with. Are they outside? I'd like to see them. Um, I do walk, walk around, and thank you. I have walked around and seen. I've loved mm -hmm. seeing mm -hmm. the thinking maps and it's so fun. on. It's, it's been phenomenal. And so. I will send you more information about question starts in an email so you've got a little more information. But that's what I'm encouraging you to do. And next Friday, we're going to meet again and we're going to share where we are, what we've learned, what worked, and what didn't. Um, and for those that um, are on your team that maybe couldn't come this morning or forgot or whatever, I mean, life happens. We yeah. know that. But it discuss in your grade level meetings or at lunch or whatever what we're doing here so they can kind of get an idea. We're going to leave these up again through the day if they want to come through. Um, and it would be interesting to see how many of you can recognize your questions. Mm -hmm. but, but please encourage the others and let them know what has occurred. Can I ask a question? Yeah, please. It was kind of my burning question. Okay. I'm confused on assessing, advancing. So are they added to the top of Blooms now? Yes. Yes. And yes. Could you maybe give us a little overview of those two in your own words? Oh, or you can email it to yeah. us, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> well, what I would like to see maybe yeah. the next session is like we all bring maybe a science topic or some kind of topic that we want to try to create higher yeah. order thinking questions and help us apply that topic to each one. Because here's my problem with these. I am uncomfortable with these. I don't know which and words, which, which questions yes. would be considered yes. these. Okay. So I don't know, yeah. like, I know what questions I want to ask, I just don't know where they would place. Oh, okay. But I would like okay. to take one topic and make one question for each of these so I can see the hierarchy. Okay, so go ahead and do what Heather's question. question. Yeah. Because some of those may, we may see how you can, you, even your kids may come up with some of these. But then if you have a, a, a particular topic mm -hmm. and you want us to walk through, yeah, we, we may not have enough it. time, but we can start on that yeah. process to carry over. Definitely. Definitely. And we're going to be focusing on questioning pretty much the month of October. Pretty much the month of October, we're focusing on that core area of questioning. And we're using visible thinking strategies to help us get there. And my understanding is this will not be their only learning walk. No, they're going to be, I think, There's doing four, four core areas. Four core areas, the questioning, the... Academic feedback. Okay, problem solving? Yes. And I can't remember the fourth one either. But we will, we will, I will be pulling visible thinking strategies for each core area. And so hopefully that will help propel us forward. Okay. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thanks. I appreciate it. Have a good Friday.